All right, I'm going to try and have a look at a problem that I've been meaning to look at for a long time now. And uh, so I'm told that the BCM, the body control module or central locking box, is just behind here. And uh, I've been told other things too, like I've got to pull out the stereo system to get to behind the stereo to pull it out. And uh, I saw a bloke on a ute the other day. Um, he undid, undid this one screw here and the box came out. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And hopefully that's all it is so I can get to it, open it up and have a look what's going on. And now the reason why I'm doing this is because the central locking and everything works perfectly fine. It's only the indicators and the horn doesn't beep anymore uh, when I lock the car or unlock the car. I don't really care if the horn doesn't too, I'd rather it didn't. But I would like the hazards to flash. So that's what I'm going to do. Pull it out, have a look, see what's wrong. Something I can fix or not. Alright, from the bat I can tell you it's not just an easy remove that screw and it drops down. Now, there's a cable tie that's holding onto the harness that I can't see from this side. And also, there's a this arm here. Stops you from getting that out, so you have to wiggle it around and everything. And then finally move the arm out of the way. Now I can get that kind of out, but I've got to get that cable tie cut on the other side to uh, be able to get it a bit more free and hopefully take it out while it's all still plugged in. Okay, so my bad. It's not a cable tie. It's this thing here. Just need to get that out, that's holding the harness in. Right, so it doesn't look like that thing just pops out. It looks like it's threaded in. So I was able to undo the electrical tape from one side. Now I should be able to wiggle it out. So take the harness off and just leave that in place. And uh, when I put it back in, I'll, I will put cable ties on it when I put it back in. Okay, so with that out of the way, I've got that box down to here. And uh, I can drop it now if I take those connections out. And uh, just wanted to know, there's a four point connection here, uh, and one here, and this is just a corner termination. I'd like to know what they're for. Uh, is there something that came out with the Fairmont that I don't have in the AU Classic? Anyway, uh, I'm gonna try and get, a, get this box a bit lower if I can, because I want to put a meter on these leads, find out what's what. So to be able to test these doors, whether they the central locking works or not, and be able to, and finding out what power is connected down there, uh, first I have to make the car think that all the doors are closed, so you can see it is there. Now, it's not like the old cars that you had a button to press in the side to remove. It's the latch in here, you need the trip closed, so that way the car thinks the door's closed, and now I can unlock it and lock it without the car beeping at me all right so I've taken the door trim off because I wanted to see what the wires on this central locking here was getting the door trim off and everything was easy this time I've, I had it all apart not too long ago there's another clip about that when I was cleaning up the rubbers for the window to open and close properly so now with these here revealed I can find out what wires going on here to lock and unlock and pair it up and uh, find out what I'd need to be able to connect so if I wanted to put in an aftermarket keyless entry, I could, because I'd prefer to do that. It's a lot cheaper to replace key fobs for 20 bucks than it is to go and get a, re a new one remade at Ford. Anyway, I might, I might not even have to do that yet. So now I'm gonna remove this and uh, we'll open it up and uh, have a look inside. Okay, so I don't know what that is. I tried to take photos of it, but nothing will focus into there. So if I can get that out of there. There's nothing wants to zoom in and take a picture of that properly. So that's the two bits there that just came off. Now in there, where I took this out of, it kind of looked like um, there's supposed to be a diode there that's blown. You can't see what I'm talking about. Hang on supposed to be a diode there that I thought might have been blown but now that that's out of the way the camera is showing me a different story when that was in the way it was making everything look grey and the camera just wouldn't focus in there properly but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an old toothbrush that's all dry I'm just going to try and clean the board up get all the dust and shit out 
Right, I've given it a quick brush over with the teeth brush. Not being too rough with it, I don't want to happen to get across a loose connection and brush it away and then just make things worse. Just a nice light brush, you know. Just to get any dust and crap out of the way and not to go too crazy on it. These two connections here, the green wires are on, they're to the left and right indicator. And um, for whatever reason, they're not working. So that's going to those two points there. So what I'll do is um, I've taken photos of the plugs as well. So I'm going to track back, find out exactly which two here are the green ones, trace them, see if I can follow the tracks to where they're going. And hopefully they follow over to one of those bigger relays because then I can put my own diode in, wire it up to those two green wires and we'll fix it that way if I have to. But um, there's nothing on here. It's all really small. So there's nothing really on here I can re-solder. I could probably redo all these connections here. You know, and a few big spots around here. But it's kind of pointless. They're not really... They don't look dry. They don't look cracked. So... I'd just be wasting my time resoldering all that. And everything else is just too small. So it doesn't look like I can fix anything anyway, but it'd be nice if I could just see where these tracks are going, if they're going to these relays, or if they're going to these relays, and then I can put my meter on it, and just uh, when I lock the car and unlock the car, I can find out which relay's tripping by holding my hand on it. I can feel it, which one's tripping, and work out what connections are going live as I lock and unlock and that, that's where I can get my power from to um, wire up to those indicators so my lights flash again. Okay so it's these two here that when you turn the indicator on the car and you've got the meter on it they're the two here that go to the indicators and they're both green wires and it doesn't look like there's any real problems down here though not that I can see. Right after last night and finding out that the problem with this board is along the other side here. You can see a picture there of it. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure that pulling it out and cleaning it up, I didn't do any damage. So I'm going to do the central locking first. Lock. Okay, that's working. If I start the car. Looks like it's still good. I'm going to put a meter on that. See if I can find an active source where I can connect up these indicators to. I try and show you this here without shaking too much. The relay, the big relay that's on this side here, that's when it locks. The big relay on the other side is when it unlocks. And uh, these points here get 12 volt when it locks. And these points here get 12 volt when it unlocks. These relays here aren't doing anything at all. So hey, I'm not going to mess around with over there. And uh, I'm just happy that my car still starts after I'm around with this last night. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, just confirm all, everything I just said. And I'm going to put a diode between here and here to the points where the hazards are over here. So power can only go to there. So it's not going to hurt anything with power going back into the system if I'm wrong because it's only to the indicators and that's the two green ones on the top and uh, with a bit of luck I'll get hazards back when I lock and unlock they won't flash once and twice like they used to and the horn won't beep again but at least I'll see the indicators doing something um, I was looking online to replace this board I'm not paying 500 bucks for a new one of these that's not gonna happen so I'll either put up with it if my ID doesn't work or I'll put in a um, aftermarket keyless entry for 20 bucks. This locks and unlocks. Lock, unlock by putting an earth on that one. But the interior light doesn't come on. So I'll lock it. And I'll come over here and unlock it. And the interior light still doesn't come on. So there's the third one down there. Unlock always. 
So once you've unlocked it, you can't unlock it anymore. But this one here is lock and unlock. None of them put the interior light on. And this one here is horn. Fourth one, sorry, not third. The fourth one there is for horn. I don't know if this information is going to be useful to anyone. I'm just recording it. It's definitely going to be useful to me. So, doing reverse now, <clears throat> adding power. This one here is the boot. There you can hear that, open the boot up. The rest of them do nothing. So I was doing a reverse. So I did a negative over more first. I do have a light bulb in between. That's my dummy test light. So it takes any load if there's any problems. I don't want to cause any problems. Okay, so putting power onto all these did nothing. The only one that reacted was this one here. You know, it's for boot. Actually, that's a lie. These two here, when I put power on them, dip, turned on the ignition. Okay, so what I'm left with now is I know which two wires are for the indicators. I know which one is unlock, but I also know that this one here is lock and unlock. So um, if I put in an aftermarket kit, one button's going to be, it doesn't matter if I press it, if I have it on lock or unlock, whatever, it's going to be that one button can lock and unlock the car and the other button can just just unlock the car. I'll re-go over them to find out if any of them are for the interior light. Problem is, I can't be careful to touch connections here and look up at the sky to see the interior light as well. So I'm going to wait for a mate to get here and then he can watch the interior light while I touch all these and let me know if any of them are the interior light. The fourth one from here, one, two, three, four, is the unlock and the interior light comes on as well. Third one across here, unlocks, no interior light. This one here, unlocks, interior, interior light comes on like it normally would. And this one here, locks. Okay, interior light stays off no matter what. If it's on, it stays on. If it's off, it stays off. When you this one here locks and unlocks, just watch it. It go up or down. Yeah, down, up. Yep. And this one here, if I go, it's down. And I go this one here. Now that's up. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. Okay. Just want to show you this here. <clears throat> if I can get in a good position. I'm going to hold the camera and not touch anything I shouldn't. So this is the left indicator. And the other one next to it is the right indicator. So that's those two there. I just need to put a diode. What I'm going to do is just put a diode from this one here in between of the wire going to there and same going to the other one so when I lock the car one side will flash and when I unlock the car the other side will flash that's good enough for this repair here and I'm going to order an aftermarket kit and we'll make this a part two with an aftermarket kit also I don't think I've mentioned make sure the battery is disconnected and the negative terminal is disconnected before playing with that Learn from experience. I've already made the mistake. I started unplugging connections and doors were locking and unlocking and everything was going crazy on me. So I was like, right, plug it back in and uh, disconnect the battery and then remove that. Okay, you can see the two points there. I've scratched the protection on the board away. So I'm gonna get some solder on there first. Now in case you're wondering why I'm doing this, because I'd rather not solder to these points here because I don't know what I'll be interrupting on the other side. So I'm trying to make my own fresh point to solder to. So that's okay there. I'm going to bring it around the side here, these wires. Now, if you're wondering why I'm soldering wires to this side here, because I know that both these here get power when one's unlocking the other one's locking so I'm going to bring these wires around the side here and not the back because there's not enough room in the back 
and I can't put the diodes on this side of the board because the diodes I have are huge. That's what I have on me, so that's what I have to deal with. And I'm just trying to find one for you. There's a diode I'm going to be using. That's a 10 amp diode. That's all I've got, so it'll go on the other side. Obviously can't go this way. The board won't go back into its casing if I do. And they're going to go to that point there. So first of all, I need to get the diodes onto the wire. So I know the power comes that way, so travels that way. Any power from these that try to go back that way won't happen. That's why you've got to use a diode. That's good enough for this side, so there's no contact anything sticking out. She's good to go. Let's try and give it a bit of a nice clean surface to go to. like it's happy to be like that. I'm going to put this back in now and then we'll give it a test run. See what I mean? The wires coming around the back there would have been pinching a bit much. There's more room on the sides. Okay. That should be right to go in as a test. And we'll see if it works. I don't doubt myself though. Everything I do normally works. So, as an added bonus, I put some heat glue on it just to uh, stop it so when the car shakes or whatever that the wires aren't going to jingle and shake those connections loose. So it's just a safety precaution really. Prevention is the best cure. Okay, she's plugged in. Now I just connect that battery up. Shut the door so she doesn't toot the horn on me. Go to the back. going to lock and we're going to unlock nice go to the front now it's lock unlock sweet told you to work okay so left indicator is lock and right indicator is unlock I'm happy with that I'll get used to that so I know which indicator is flashing knowing if the car is locking or unlocking I also know that if I was to use two diodes on the two green wires and cross over to each other, it's going to stop back feed on the power, but it will allow both sides to function at the same time. Uh, in case anybody's thinking, oh yeah, I know how to fix that to make both sides flash. I know how to do that as well. It's just that what I'm thinking is if it's only got one side of the lights to power up, it's less load than all the lights to power up. 
so locking is one side unlocking is the other less load on the diode and the circuit board okay interior lights off so this one here above that one there the big the big spot there above that that's unlock and interior light comes on you didn't hear it because the car's already unlocked so if I come over to here third one along and this is the reason why I'm really doing this so the car's already unlocked that doesn't work so that one there third one across is unlock with no interior light coming on and this one over here above that is unlock with the interior light come on now I'll lock the car Lock the car now if I press it or touch it, I should say. This one here will unlock. This one here will unlock and two light comes on. And voila, that happened. Have a lock the car again and tap the third one across here. It'll unlock, but the interior light doesn't come on. So that one there is with the interior light coming on and it has a timed delay, so unlock the car, it's slowly after about 5 seconds or 10 seconds, whatever it is, the light goes to dim until it's out and that one does nothing. So this one here is unlock, then up one and across this one, that's lock and unlock. So that's locked, unlocked, lock, and I tap this one in here, unlock, lock and tap this one over here, unlock. So that's how it's going to work. And I'm pretty sure uh, central locking kits, the aftermarket ones, also, if you've locked, they won't let you lock twice. So I'll have to double check that, but it's all right. And this one's gonna lock. That's, that's a boot. Okay. So pressing F to this one is boot. And that's lock and unlock. I better make sure. Yep, yeah, car's unlocked. I'm gonna find out which one is lock. It is something I could have clearly missed because if the car was already locked and I tapped it, nothing would have happened and I would have just moved on. Okay, I went over more. There is no lock. You've got so you've got over here, you've got the horn. If you put an earth to that, that's horn. Earth to the third one across here, that's unlock. And earth to the ninth one across from here, that's unlock and the interior light comes on. The one, you get up one and across, so that's eighth one across from here, eighth one there. That's, un, uh, that's lock and unlock. And the one next to that is boot if you put an earth to that. But also over here, that one there, is uh, the boot unlock if you put power to it and if you was to put power to that connection there or that connection there that also turns the ignition on so now that I know now I can put this back together and do the wiring the aftermarket kit will work uh, I'll just have to be careful with the locking feature because I've got to make sure that when I lock I can't lock twice because if I lock twice, then in theory, what I'm really doing is unlocking. Okay, I just want to show you this here. Now, if the car was locked, and I put earth from here to here, it unlocks. Okay, this white wire is to the light. So it tells the car, if the, to the switch, sorry. It tells the car if it's open or closed. So that's not really doing anything. That's the earth. And this, depending on which way the power is sent, that aquitates the aquitator um, either way so for an instance one or the other gets power to tell the aquitator to go which way what I am not seeing here is that I can't tap this again to lock or unlock this only lets me go one way so that means that when I push this down it's telling the car that it's locked because this wire and so it knows that it needs to unlock obviously so when I go like this it lets me unlock it but the car recognizes now that the doors open until that switch is closed from this one and then 
it will allow me to yeah, recognize that the door is closed because this would then be connected to this one here because when the doors closed, these two here are, are shorter together. When the doors unlocked, there's no contact between them. So that's sending a signal back to the ECU saying the door is now closed. And uh, once the door's open, there's no connection there anymore between the two. Now I don't know, and I'll try it because that's what I do. I'm going to join those two wires together. Because now I'm telling the car that the door's closed. So it automatically opens. So the car's saying no, the door's not closed, the door's open. So unfortunately So earth to this one here, to the white one, nothing. Earth to the yellow one, nothing. Earth to these two, they're already earth because there's no power hitting them to, to move the equitator. Lock the door. Oh, there you go. Lock the door and it doesn't matter if you tap this one, which makes sense, or this one, because when, the, when it's locked, they're both a closed circuit, like I said. When it's open, they're both no longer a closed circuit. Uh, so there's something in the signal there to the ECU that's these two telling the ECU whether it's open or closed is, is how that works. I'm gonna have, I can tape all this up now, get the door back together. I won't be doing anything with these wires. And uh, I'll start terminating some wires at the BCM. Okay, so we're gonna go over these wire colors here. Now, I already know some of you be, th be thinking, I don't use those blue things, they're uh, junk. You know, I've never had a fail one. Um, yeah, I've bent a couple. Um, I bent one doing this, actually. Doing that, see? It bent. It's only because I had the wrong angle when I was applying the pressure, and I pushed it sideways instead of straight down. And uh, all of these I've already tested, they're all working. But I've put them behind stereo systems and... Not high, not high amperage areas, like I wouldn't use them on headlights or something, but where well, it's only um, needs to be a tap of voltage or something, something that's not gonna carry out a lot of load, that's where I use them. And I've never had a bad one, so I quite like them, each to their own. So this orange line here, I had to actually add that myself. That was missing a pin, that's for the lock and unlock. Now you could solder it to the board, which I didn't want to. And uh, looking around, and I found couple of harnesses that I hang on to I have a yard full of useful stuff people say it's junk but I say it's useful stuff and I've probably only used these like three times in my life but I'm glad I've got them because it makes getting the pins out a lot easier so I've pushed that pin into there and it wasn't exact fit needed a bit of encouraging but I got it in there and it works the boot is red with grey tag add earth to the, that one and the boot pops uh, both greens with grey double tag, uh, both indicators. The black with the blue line is um, unlock with the interior light coming on. And I think that's it. Now I'll put the circuit board back in so I can show you as these are all tagged and working. And uh, I can even join the two green ones temporarily to show you both indicators will work when I lock and unlock because joining them together will make all the lights work. Which one, that's what I was talking about earlier. I could cross the cross two diodes to make that function. Uh, already been over that. Okay, so first of all, we'll do lock and unlock on this orange one. So that's working fine. That's the tag. I, that's the pin I had to add myself. And this blue one is unlock. So if I lock the car, then unlock. And this purple one for the boot and the two green ones are for your indicators everything's happy days now I'll join these two together just so we can see both indicators flash that'll tell me that we're good to go so now I can tuck this away put it all back install it properly 
uh, after I've tested these indicators and um, get it ready for the aftermarket kit to arrive. Okay, so we'll look at both indicators and now we're going to unlock. See that? And then lock. There we go, and lock. Okay. Okay, I got it back in. But that was a struggle. It's not as easy as other videos I've watched that say just um, do one screw, pull it out, solder a circuit board, slap it back in, and off you go. Um, it's not like that at all. This is fair income, true DIY. Oh, I'm out of breath getting that back in. Anyway, as you can see there, the harness is the my harness that I've made is ready for the aftermarket kit. We're finished for now. So now here's a little bit of a diagram for you of basically everything we've gone over so you know what everything does and you can see for yourself uh, where all the pins are that I was touching. I really appreciate you being here watching this and if you got this far, thanks heaps and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.